Now that we've discussed the eccentricity of a vertex in a graph, we can discuss the graph's radius and diameter. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing the eccentricity of a vertex. We'll use that for these two new definitions today. As a quick refresher, in a connected graph G, if we take a vertex V from that graph, we say that the eccentricity of that vertex, denoted as E of V, is simply the distance between V and a vertex farthest from V in the graph G. So the vertex V might be adjacent to some vertices, it might be close to some other vertices, but however far away the furthest vertex from V is, that distance is V's eccentricity. Then we say that the radius of a graph G is the minimum of all eccentricities of the vertices in the graph. And similarly, the diameter of the graph G, denoted like that, is the maximum eccentricity among all vertices of the graph. And these terms are actually kind of similar to their meanings for traditional circles. For example, if we take a point, say P, inside this circle, we may consider what points on the circle is P furthest from. Well, it may in fact be quite far from some points that are on the circle, whereas it may be pretty close to some other points. But the eccentricity of this point P in the circle would be this distance, that furthest distance that it has from some point on a circle. So then, which point inside of a circle would have the minimum eccentricity. Well, that would be the center of the circle. The distance between the center of the circle and every point on the circle is in fact the same, and that distance, of course, is called the radius. And it's similar with diameter as well. If we pick two points on a circle, the distance between them may be rather small, or it could be fairly large, but the greatest distance between two points on a circle would be the diameter of the circle. Just as in a graph where we say the diameter is the maximum eccentricity of any vertex in the graph. It's about time for some examples. Here is a graph we're calling G4, and its vertices are labeled with their eccentricities. For example, this vertex here its distance from this vertex is only one. However, its greatest distance from any vertex in the graph is two. For example, it's two away from this vertex on the right. On the other hand, this vertex on the right has an eccentricity of four. As we see, it's only two away from this middle bottom vertex, but it is in fact a distance of four away from this vertex on the left, so its eccentricity is four. So what is the radius of this graph? Well, the radius is the minimum of all eccentricities of the vertices in the graph. The minimum eccentricity is attained by these two vertices. They both have eccentricities of two. So the radius of G4 is two. Similarly, the diameter is quite simple. It's just the maximum eccentricity of all vertices in the graph. The maximum eccentricity is obtained by these two vertices that have eccentricities of four. So the diameter of the graph is four. Now this is going to get good. Do you notice anything familiar about the radius and diameter here and how they relate? What you might notice is that the diameter happens to be two times the radius. So is this always true? Uh, well, let's see. Here is another graph we'll call G3. For now, it looks exactly the same as G4, but we're going to change it. In G4, the radius of the graph was 2, and the diameter was 4. And so, of course, the diameter was 2 times the radius. How could we reduce the diameter of the graph G4? What change would we have to make? One thing we could do is to erase one of these end vertices, or delete them. If we delete this vertex on the right, say, then the eccentricity of this other vertex is no longer four. It's not four away from any vertex in this new graph. 
It was four away from that end vertex, but we've deleted that. So now the eccentricity of this vertex is actually three because it's three away from this vertex over here, for example. So we could change that eccentricity to three, and then this vertex over here no longer has an eccentricity of three, its eccentricity is two. For example, it is two away from this vertex, and that is its greatest distance from any vertex in the graph. The rest of the eccentricities are still correct. So now, the radius of this graph, the minimum eccentricity, well, it's the same as before. The minimum eccentricity is still 2, which is now obtained by 3 vertices. On the other hand, though, the diameter of this graph has been reduced. The diameter, the maximum eccentricity, is now 3, obtained by those two vertices. And so we can see in this case, the diameter is not equal to 2 times the radius. We'll come back to this idea of relating diameter and radius for graphs in a second. Let's quickly look at one more example. We're going to call this G2. Right now it's the same as G3, but we're going to change it to reduce its diameter. Right now the diameter is still 3 because, for example, these two vertices have a distance of 3 from each other, and that's the eccentricity of both of these vertices. Now we could reduce the eccentricity eccentricity of, say, this vertex here if we were to delete this end vertex that has an eccentricity of 3. Now, all of the vertices will have eccentricities of 2. So, what's the radius of this graph? Well, that is the minimum eccentricity obtained by any vertex, which in this case is 2. And in fact, the diameter is also 2, because the maximum eccentricity of any vertex is also 2. All the eccentricities are the same. In this case, we see that the diameter is actually equal to the radius. So in these three examples, we saw the diameter equaling the radius. We saw the diameter being bigger than the radius, but not 2 times it. And we also saw the diameter indeed being 2 times the radius. Now in fact, these are examples of the entire spectrum of possibilities for how radius and diameter relate, which is pretty cool. So no, it's not the case that diameter equals 2 times the radius for graphs. But it is true that for every connected graph G, the diameter is between the radius and two times the radius. It cannot go outside of this range. And we'll prove this theorem next time. I'll leave a link in the description to that lesson. Again, notice in our examples how we saw the diameter go from two times the radius to equaling the radius, but it cannot go outside of this range. The diameter can't be smaller than the radius, and the diameter can't be more than two times the radius. All right, let's see just one more example. So far, we've just been altering the diameter of our graph Here's one more that we'll call G1. This is the same graph we were looking at a moment ago, G2, but let's change this graph to alter its radius. In this case, that can be accomplished by deleting any of these vertices. Let's say we delete this one here. Now, what are the proper eccentricities of the vertices in this new graph? Well, this one and this one both have eccentricities of 2 still because they're 2 away from each other. However, the vertex here in the middle has an eccentricity of 1 because its maximum distance between any other vertex in the graph is 1. So now the radius of this graph, the minimum eccentricity of any of its vertices, is 1. Its diameter is still 2, since that's the maximum eccentricity of any vertex in the graph. So I hope that helped you understand radius and diameter of graphs. Again, the eccentricity of a vertex V is the distance between V and a vertex furthest from it in the graph. Then, the minimum eccentricity of all vertices is the radius of the graph, and the maximum eccentricity is the diameter. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks a lot for watching. Reindeer to pick me up and slowly get to know me. We'll unwrap each other until we're never lonely. Hello.